Hello again and welcome. Today's video is going to be a fairly simple project. It's going to be a birdhouse. Uh, a friend of mine and colleague at work um, has asked me to make him one for his mother's birthday next month in February. Um, it'll be winging, if you excuse the pun, its way up to Scotland for his mum. So I thought I'd do a video on it. And the there are various methods of making a birdhouse. This is just one of them. Uh, it's an article I, I read in um, a fairly recent, a uh, couple of months, three or four months ago, Woodturning magazine here in the UK, uh, and I've adopted that method now, and it's, it, it, it's a very effective method, as I say, though it is, is one of many. Um, I'd also like to thank, once again, all my subscribers. Um, your support and responses to new subscriptions is amazing, and I thank you very, very much indeed. And also, on the UK and Ireland Woodturning Symposium front, uh, we have some exciting news for you, which Martin Sabin smith will reveal towards the end of this week, uh, possibly Thursday or Friday of this week. So, um, all I can say is that things are going extremely well still, thank thankfully, um, <clears throat> and it does promise to be a really exciting and informative weekend. So I'll say no more on, on the UKIS front, I'll leave that to Martin in his video later on. Um, again, we'll go over to the lathe now and we'll make a bird. Okay, what I've got here now is a piece of um, eucalyptus which has got some nice spalting in it. Um, it's about two inches long in total. I've put a dovetail tenon on the back to put into my uh, abdominal jaws with the dovetail jaws in them. Um, it's about a two inch diameter. I'm going to be using a one inch force and a bit to drill a hole and I'm going to go in just over about an inch. So we'll do that and then uh, we'll carry on from there. Speed with a, with a force a bit of this size around 500 revs, something like that. is now drilled to the mark I put on there on the force and a bit shank so now we have the um, the body drilled out and now I'm going to um, use my parting tool and put a small tenon on the end that's going to be used to locate it in the roof. Now I can go ahead and do some shaping. Now just mark there that's the depth of my hole so I just want to make sure that um, I don't do much shaping that's going to affect the... it's going to go through the side. Okay so it's just light shaping really just give it a little bit of a um, A little bit of a shape because what we can do afterwards is we will turn it round to do the bottom. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to uh, part this off. So what I need to do now is to make a recess with a parting tool um, in the remaining bit of wood here, and then I will make it so it fits tightly to the um, small spigot I've got here, and then I'll jam that on, and I can finish off the bottom and sand and finish the body. Okay, and so what I've done hole. now is um, created a recess for the tenon to fit on. Now, although that is quite solid, I like to get a little bit of, um, just get a bit of paper towel and and then that makes a nice tight fit. There's no need on this one, I don't think, to actually dampen it. If it is a bit slack, all you have to do is down for the paper towel, that'll expand the wood and that'll give you a nice fit then. 
Now always be aware when you're working um, on anything like a jam truck like this to take very light cuts and where possible always put your pressure towards the headstock otherwise you'll find it'll flip out. So a little bit of extra security is just bring up um, your tailstock with a live centre and then that will give you that little bit of extra security. No, no real pressure needed just to um, make it a bit more stable if you're, on, if, you're not, if you're not happy with doing it without that extra bit of support. And now we can take away the uh, excess here. Yeah, that's fine. So I'll sand up now to um, 600 and I'll come back. Okay, so it's all sanded up now to 600. I'm now going to apply uh, a sanding sealer mix and then apply two coats of Martin Saban Smith's Ham Shasheen. So I'll put the sanding sealer on. Nice figure on this piece of uh, eucalyptus. Okay, we'll let that dry and I'll put another coat on. I'll denib in between each coat and then I'll put two coats of Hampshire Sheen on. The, the uh, tenon at the top, which is going to go into the uh, into the roof. We don't want to get any wax on there because we're going to put a little bit of glue on that, a bit of CA glue to stick it to the roof. So that's why it's better to do it this way where the tenon is actually protected. Okay, I'll come back when we put in the wax. Now we're going to apply some of uh, Martin Saban Smith's Hampshire Sheen. Um, I've tried various ways. You can apply it with the lathe running or with its um, stopped and I like to apply the first coat now with it stopped and just work it well in and then turn the lathe on and give it a buff applied the second coat now and I've let that um, go off a bit and I've got a final buff now and then the body will be finished apart from drilling the holes. Okay, a really nice, nice finish there from the old Hampshire Sheen. I'll put a link down to Martin's website so you can have a look. Now what I tend to do now is to, I've got a hollow live centre and I bring that up with a mouse pad for support and then that will just bring that forward so it won't come off the, uh, the tenon. Remove the tool rest and decide where I want the hole. I think sort of in the middle of that bit of figure there would be nice. So then I apply the um, spindle lock so that nothing's going anywhere. A 10 millimeter force and a bit in my drill. And decide where I want the hole as I say. And try and get it in the middle there and then drill through there we 
we go. So there's the uh, the entrance into our little house, and then just below there, I'm going to put a two mil or three mil, depending, uh, hole for the perch. I'm just going to drill the perch now. perch will go. There's the hole. I mean it's slightly off actually but you know does it matter? I don't think so. Never mind. I'm certainly not going to redo another one. <laughs> okay so um, now I'll make the uh, take it off and we'll have a look how it looks. Let's remove that and there's the body of our little birdhouse. Um, finished and all remains to do now. Okay, okay and what I've done is cut a little bit of uh, scrap and put it into the <coughs> uh, drill, end of a drill bit and worked it on the belt sander. Got a bit of a shape to it and what I tend to do is I make the end here narrow enough to go into the little hole and then I just dribble some um, CA glue in the back to hold it in rather than trying to do it through the hole because you inevitably get CA glue <coughs> um, running on your finished surface. So run it through the back and that will keep it in place onto the roof. <laughs> what I've got here now is a piece of uh, sapili which would be a nice contrast I think for the roof. So what I've done I've made a mark uh, here to make a small recess um, which will then fit over the tenon on the body. So here's the recess I've created and the the body will fit in there like so. Now I can reverse this now onto my jaws and in expansion mode and then I can work on the roof. Just check that uh, it all goes in okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'll sand this off now and uh, I'll come back when I'm applying the final coat of Hampshire okay, Sheen. Just about to apply the second coat of Hampshire Sheen. the lid and the body done and we'll go to the final stage. And here's the finished birdhouse with the um, the roof CA'd to the body and a little um, brass eyelet in the top to hang it from a ribbon. Uh, they're great fun to make uh, and especially at Christmas time I mean you can use more plain you can use plainer woods and paint them and make them very festive but they're great fun and quite easy to turn. Well I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much indeed for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Cheers now.